Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this is part two of my watercolor sketching tidbit. I am coming to you from my flat in Citta della Pieve, Italy. Last week we covered the portable sets and the water brushes and this week we're going to dive into a quick tutorial of my process for watercolor sketching. It is something that you can use to document your travels in a journal or on a pad of paper. You can use it to make fun postcards for your family. Um, I want you to experiment with it and give yourself permission to play. Um, it is a process that is not meant to be fine frameable art. It is meant to be a way for you to chronicle your journey and um, to practice your painting and sort of just play with your watercolors. So let's do it without um, pressure and let's do it as a way a means of adding color to sketches and um, so let's get started welcome back to part two of my watercolor sketching demo uh, last week we covered the watercolor sets and uh, the water brushes and how they work and this week I'm going to uh, show you a quick demo on how I handle my watercolor sketching so what I've got is a kneaded rubber eraser and that is an eraser that doesn't leave any crumbs and doesn't damage the surface of the paper and how you clean it is that you knead it like this like stretch it and bring it back together on itself and that will clean all of the excess graphite off of it when it gets dirty um, i also use this for charcoal and you will be surprised how clean it gets when you knead it so that is the kneaded rubber eraser I love that the most for erasing graphite. Um, I've got a mechanical pencil because when I'm on the go, I don't want to have to sharpen my pencil. So the mechanical pencil just keeps dispersing lead and I don't need to worry about a pencil sharpener. But you of course could use a number two, uh, but I actually sat on this. You can see that it's bent. So it was in my pocket and I sat on it and uh, I don't know where the sharpener is. So this is not exactly my favorite tool, uh, but it works. Um, then I've got two, uh, fine point permanent markers. I've got a, uh, a Micron pen and I've got a Faber-Castell Pitt pen. And what you want to make sure that these say is that they're archival and that they're permanent. So um, you want to make sure that they're not going to bleed when they get hit with water. So they need to be a permanent marker and they need to be archival and fade proof. So these are um, from the art supply store and um, they are both a pretty fine fine point. I think they're both equal. This one is an 05 and this one is an F, so fine. So they're both, uh, this one might be a little thicker, but you'll experiment with them and determine what, how heavy of a line you want or if you want a line at all. Um, sometimes I just sketch with the pencil and leave it at that, but I do like going back in with my sketching and re-embellishing my lines with a permanent pen. So I've got a couple of fun vegetables here and I've got a pad of 140 pound watercolor paper. You can obviously do this in your sketchbook, in your mixed media book. Um, in a pinch you could do it on regular old paper. The uh, problem with thin paper is that it wrinkles and buckles. Um, the nice thing about a, a watercolor sheet, uh, a heavy watercolor sheet, is that it's going to stay flat and it's got an excellent surface for painting. So. So what I'm going to do is I'm really going to look at sketching what I see in front of me and I'm going to go for the pepper because uh, it's a little more challenging than the tomato, which is an even sphere that's kind of easy. But I'm just going to really pay close attention to what I'm looking at and I'm going to start with the stem of the pepper and the little nibs uh, uh, points that come around the base of that and because those determine or head out into my curved parts here of the pepper. So I'm starting with the stem and then I'm going to bring that down where I see it. And here's my kneaded rubber eraser. I pull it to a little point if I want to get into a small area and I can come in here and take that line out. A little light touch is all you need. And then I'm going to go from here into looking closely at how the rounded parts come around from the stem. This is kind of a funky shaped pepper. The back of it is even more curiously shaped than the front.
the stem is actually shorter and the pepper comes below it. So I'm gonna erase the stem down a little shorter. And I think it's a little wider, it's a little chunkier than what I drew it. I'm always correcting my drawing by looking at the thing that I'm drawing. And it's a little more curved. Actually swoops down this way and I can see some of the top. So depending on how stylized you want your line quality, you can add cross hatching or dots or scribbling um, or embellishing on your lines. You can draw in a scribbly way, you can draw in a more straight way. This is sort of uh, something that needs to follow your own style in the line quality um, that you're going to add to this sketch. But I'm reinforcing my pencil lines and adding that style. Uh, the dashes, the dots, the cross hatching, and I'm sort of getting it to a line quality that I'm happy with. And then once I do that, I'm going to take my trusty kneaded eraser and I'm going to eliminate the graphite lines that I used as my guide. And this will tend to lighten your black lines just a smidge, you can leave them that way, or sometimes I will go back in after the watercolor and sort of reinforce or add more black mark making at the end. So that's sort of um, the next step after the watercolor. So now I've cleaned out all my pencil work in my sketch and I've now got my brushes and I am going to notice that I've got yellow at the top and green at the bottom and so I'm going to blend myself. I'm going to start very light yellow and the key with watercolor is to leave some areas of white and that's the hardest part because once you cover it up it's very difficult to bring that white of the paper back. So I'm going to start light and I'm going to use broad brush strokes and I'm going to notice that I've got highlights around the front edge here so I'm going to leave myself some white in there. Now this is just my first layer of a real pale yellow. I'm getting watery. I'm squeezing the barrel of the brush to distribute water as I'm doing this so it's making a nice watery layer. I am also going to make sure I leave those whites squeezing to distribute more water, looking at my yellow where it comes around. Really my green is right at the bottom of these two sides so I'm going to pay close attention to that. I'm leaving white. I'm going to add a little more yellow right under here. There and then I'm going to come into the green. So I'm going to squeeze water through the light green in my box. I'm going to blend it up here in the lid so I can make sure that it's a, a nice light green. I'm going to start light. So I'm going to brush that in this area. Remember to leave those highlights. So I'm going to leave some white areas and I've got a nice light green there. And then I'm going to look at the green down in here. So I'm going to add a lot of water and blend that. So it goes softly into the yellow and remember to leave myself a little bit of white down there. So this is the first pass. Then I'm gonna squeeze through my brush and clean, squeeze clean water down through to clean out the green. And now I'm gonna come back with a little darker yellow, a little more of a golden yellow and look at where the darks are. And I'm gonna layer this with the previous light yellow. And now I'm gonna go darker down into this edge and over on this edge. So basically in the creases, it's a little darker. I'm squeezing to apply more water through the brush so I can get a nice watery line. And it's also gonna be darker at the back. So I'm gonna go a little darker here. I'm gonna squeeze water into my orange and I'm gonna go a little orangey at the back. If I feel that that's too dark, I can always go back in and add more water and lighten it up a bit, but I kind of like that. It's giving me a nice feeling of light and dark. I'm going to do that over in this side as well with my original yellow. So now I'm layering and getting darker. I'm going to come in here, make a little shadow there, but I'm going to be careful not to get rid of those whites. I'm leaving the white is the hardest part. 
I've already lost it here. You can, when it's wet like that, because it bled together, I can come back and lighten it while it's wet with the paper towel. Once it's dry, it's not gonna do that. So now I'm gonna bring a little, I'm gonna squeeze through the brush and bring a little bit of that yellow back down here, being careful to leave that light area. And I'm gonna do the same now in with the green while this is wet, see if I can get them to blend together by squeezing. Trying to achieve this soft blend down here. So I'm squeezing water through my brush as I apply the green so it actually blends into the yellow on its own. Going a little darker. I'm always gonna start light and then go darker because once you go too dark, it's very hard to lighten it up. So now I've got my stem, which would be a nice limey green in here, but I'm not gonna do it quite yet because everything's so wet around here. I wanna make sure that I wait until it dries so it doesn't bleed all out everywhere. So I've, um, Got some nice darks here that are bleeding into my medium yellows. I could add a little orange here in the front. I see that there's a little dark orange in the front. Well, that's muddy because I didn't get my green out, so I'm glad I mixed it there. So I'm gonna squeeze through, squeeze and clean water through here or through into the sponge to get my brush clean before I go back in with my orange and bring a little bit of that dark sort of in here. Now that's a little too much, so I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna blend it out with just water. Squeezing my brush, adding a little more water and looking at the shading, paying close attention to the shading, getting that orange color sort of a little darker back here. And I'm just gonna start from light and gradually go to dark, very gradually go to dark because it's easier to do that than to get rid of something that's too dark. You can't go the other direction. So that's a little murky right there. Uh, the green is blending into the orange, so I'm gonna pick that up. Dried my brush and just dragged over it to sort of bring it, lighten it, lift it off because it was wet. So the alternative to using the paper towel is taking a dry clean brush and sort of swooping it over and that will also lift up your paint. So now I think this is dry in here, so I'm gonna squeeze through. I'm gonna squeeze through and clean and squeeze through and get some of this green yellow that I see in the stem here and I'm dry, so I feel like I can get that in there successfully without it blending too much. Gonna leave that white there, there and also I'm gonna put some of that in my stem area being careful not to get rid of my white. Now I need to get a little bit of a darker green, so I'm gonna go with brown Ooh, and black apparently. That's a little too dark. Brown and green. There we go. Brown and green so I can make a nice darker green. A Little bit of red to it too, we'll dull it down. That's a lot, now I end up looking just like I did with the black. Brown and green. Brown. And I'm gonna go really lightly with my brush here and add some darks. And I can do that by just dropping, touching the brush. Because I just wanna add them in a few places. I'm making a few dots with my brush and then I can come in again and do it over that. I can do another layer, which will get me darker again, but I need to wait for it to dry completely before I can do another layer. So the end of my stem here, I'm gonna add a little bit of dark green, leaving the white. I'm gonna bring that orange back in again. squeezing through the brush and adding a little orange down here for a shadow. And so it's back and forth like that, um, making sure you squeeze clean water through your brush so it's clean. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my pointed brush here and I need to add a little bit more yellow orange, I mean yellow green at the bottom. I don't wanna get rid of my white, but I'm gonna put it in the two sides like that. Now maybe I can use that dark with the pointed brush. 
put that in there as that original layer is drying now I'm multiplying with the same color again but it makes it darker so you can see the process I'm not worried about staying in the lines I'm blending it out and I don't want it to be floating so I'm gonna have it sit on a ground and I'm gonna do that with sort of a neutral so I'm gonna take might get it to a clean space and add a little bit of blue and a little bit of that blackish green and a little bit of this yellow that I messed up. And I'm going to get to sort of a neutral color where I can sort of give it a shadow. It's not dark enough. And I'm going to add a little drop shadow with my neutral grayish green that I blended up here. So my pepper is sitting on the ground. And I can soften the edges of that by adding a little bit more water, squeezing through the brush or dipping in the cup, squeezing through the brush when I don't have a water cup. And again, I can come back with the edges of a clean paper towel and lift some of that. This isn't exactly a clean paper towel. I can lift some of that color while it's wet. And there I've got my pepper. My green is bleeding a bit into the drop shadow. That's okay though. Um, so now I will let it dry and then I will come back and embellish with a little bit more of the line work. So I'm gonna get this a little darker in here. Okay, so I took a few minutes to let the pepper dry, and while I was waiting for the pepper to dry, I painted a little tomato. So um, now I'm gonna go back in with my fine point marker and maybe reinforce some of these lines that got a little washed out, or I might add a little more embellishment that I think would be helpful. So at this point, you can bring back in some lines that got washed out or you add new, and you just wanna reestablish your drawing always looking at your subject so that if you can correct anything in your drawing, now is the chance to do it. I lost some of my little dots that I put in here. So I'm gonna put those back. Some of my cross hatching. <clears throat> I added a little bit more orange around the edges. It's a case of, it's a matter of adding layers, starting light and layering to dark and going slowly and letting some areas dry before you apply new and letting some areas work into wet. The yellows and the oranges looked really great worked into wet, but when I got down here into the green, I needed to work a little bit drier so they didn't all blend together. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of line quality here. I'm not gonna outline every bit of it, just sort of the highlights. And then in my tomato, the same thing. Uh, the only thing I really wanna reestablish are these little green things from the stem. They got a little washed out. And the rest of it I really like the way that it is. I used orange and red and then went back in with a little purple for the shadows and I used wet into wet so it all sort of blended together. So there I've got my my lines that I wanted to put back in. I'm happy with how both of those look. So I'm gonna sign it. I'm gonna go back to my pencil because it's a little less bold and heavy than the black line. So I'm gonna sign it with my pencil. And that makes it a fun little kitchen illustration done in my kitchen. And that is watercolor sketching. You can do urban scenes, um, you can do people, you can do vegetables, you can do planters. Um, a great book that I have loved and read and reread is Urban Watercolor Sketching. And um, this is a guide to drawing, painting, and storytelling in color. Uh, I think that you would enjoy it. I am going to add it to my Amazon uh, shopping list if it's not there already. It really goes through, he details a lot of tools in the back um, and he goes through all the drawing and layering in the front including using the black line 
and earlier on he does a lot with uh, minimal black line. So it's a great book. I would suggest it. I think it's a good read. Um, I read it cover to cover in one sitting, but it was a long airplane flight. So there is my watercolor sketch demo for you. Thank you for being here and happy Friday. Thank you.